Hello and welcome to the fourth episode in this video series on natural language processing with Python. In the last video we looked at a text file and we took a snippet of data from it. Then we grouped by word slices of that file. In this video instead of grouping by words we can group by sentences. So let's go ahead and get started. Like before, we want to go from NLTK dot corpus import Gutenberg. Okay, just as a reminder, we can go Gutenberg dot file IDs with an S. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a variable the Gutenberg dot sense sense S E N T S method. So that will group the lines of text together as opposed to individual words. So let's go ahead and, and view what that would look like. And we'll use, I think a good one to use for this one is Blake Poems. So I'll co copy that. And I'll go ahead and go DP for Blake Poems. <coughs> Spell it out Blake Blake poems equals. So we have um, Gutenberg dot sense S E N T S, and we can see here here are a few of the methods that we could select, but we're going to use sense for this one. And we need the literal quotes. Okay. So we go Blake poems, and if we pick the first couple lines, are going to be the title and some other descriptive information. So I will pick um, the fortieth entry. So notice that in the last video, if we did this, we would get a single value. Now we get a full sentence, and it's part of one list entry item. Now, if you're familiar with arrays, for example, in C programming, or if you're just familiar with 2D arrays in Python, if we want to select a word inside of a sentence, we just use um, a second set of brackets. So for example, here is the 40th line, but if we want to select shade here, we have the second bracket that goes within the 40th entry, and then we can select that value. So we go, the zero index is I, this punctuation mark is one, two, and then shade is going to be three. So let's put that to the test. Okay. So grouping by sentences can be good because you can still access by word. You're just going to use that second dimension in that array. Well, it's not really an array. It's really a list, but it appears that way by looking at the syntax. Okay. So let's see now that we have Blake poems. In the last video we looked and when we saw the length of the book we were looking at, it was about 100,000 um, words contained with it. So let's see the length of this. So Blake poems and use the len length function. 
Okay, so 438, not too bad. Okay, so let's just use a quick example to where we only want to print out a sentence of a certain length. Because perhaps you don't want to exceed um, a certain sentence length for some reason. So let's go ahead and go for I in range zero comma length of Blake poems so what are we saying here we have a for loop and we're going to go and iterate through each sentence in Blake poems so from zero to the size of the the list okay and you can do multiple line statements in idle by the way you just have to use the correct syntax and don't forget the colon there so let's say that we want to print out um, let's look for sentences that have a length of 10 So how would we do this? We could use an if statement and say if the sentence length equals 10, then print the sentence. So let's go ahead and do that. So if the length of Blake poems at the current index, because we're iterating through all of Blake poems that list equal equal so that's a comparison of does this value equal the other and we'll say 10 because length returns an integer and we can compare it to that go ahead and do this and you can do multiple indent indentational lines in idle and go print that entry. So that would be Blake poems I. So with any luck this will work. Ah, I need a bracket here. Okay. So we group by sentences to to better organize and scan through this text file this collection of poems and we were able to write a for loop in order to pick out lines that were 10 we were able to pick out sentences that have 10 characters or 10 values in each sentence and we ignored all the other ones Yeah, and I think that'll do it for today. This was just an exercise to show you that you can you can strategically group your text file either by words or sentences, or you could write other ways, like for example, for paragraphs. So it's good to know you have these bag of tricks in order to get your data, and depending on what you want to do, your goal should be to filter out information and group it in a way that makes sense for your application. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more content.